Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Sweet, so I've just got my new XR500 router. Where should I put this thing? It looks amazing. It needs to go like right there, doesn't it? Or or like like up there. Do you think that, that looks good or or not? Should we just put it in the back room or something? So something, and I know this is a very subjective thing, but something that I don't really like router companies doing, or router, however you would like to say it, I'm English so I'm going to say router, and excuse me for that, they make them look like really, really cool, as if you're actually going to put them front and centre, right next to your gaming setup, right next to your monitor. I think router companies should, number one, start integrating antennas into the body of the actual device itself. Now I know that could degradate range, but... Really? I mean, it's a it's a spider, isn't it? Well, look at that thing. And it's very evident that Netgear have designed this router with the intent that you put it front and centre in your desk because uh, it doesn't even have mounting hardware on the back. So uh, you could argue that you have external antennas for better range, but then they don't allow you to mount it nice and high up, you know, to spread that signal out. A little bit odd, really. So uh, what we've gone ahead and done is we've made a makeshift little gaming setup with an Xbox One and a PlayStation 4 and a nice place to plug in our new gaming router here. Let's give it some power, let's give it some internet access, and also let's plug in my laptop to configure it. And let's get to work and see why they put the word gaming on these routers. I mean, come on, I swear to God, the majority of people will prefer their router to have the same capabilities that this thing has, which we'll get into in a second, but look more like a ubiquity USG. Like, this thing is just super, super lovely. And then this thing, I'm not saying it doesn't look nice, but do you see where I'm coming from here? Netgear, make something pretty with the same awesome features that this hopefully has, which we're about to dive into right now. So, you guys can see my MacBook screen right now, and what I've done is I've gone ahead and plugged an Ethernet cable into my MacBook, into the back of the router here, and then I've also gone ahead and uh, given the router some internet via its WAN port and plugged it in. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is type in here 192.168.1.1, and that is going to load up the configuration page for the XR500, as to which then it's going to say your bandwidth. So the first thing we need to do is tell the router the bandwidth that our internet connection is. So I'm gonna click run again, because I've already ran this test once. So as you can see here, guys, it says your bandwidth, and it's pulled me in at about 153.50 down and 79 up. Now my internet fluctuates, you can change these manually here, but I'm gonna click next. And then what it's going to go ahead and do is ask us to create a username, admin username and password and some security questions. Now what it's going to do, once you've clicked next after that, is ask us to set up our wireless networks. So now you see here it says click here to edit your other Wi-Fi band. So this thing has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave this box checked because what it's going to do is that we'll use the same SSID and password for both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and automatically determine what band your device should be on inside the router. And I do have to say that it's pretty good at doing it. So I'm going to leave it on to automatically do it itself. But you could do 5G and then have a separate network for the 2.4. But I'm going to click this and I'm just going to have TechFlow Set yourself a new Wi-Fi password and then click next. So before it actually dumped us onto this page, it asked us to upgrade the firmware and it went to check and it turns out there was no new firmware available. So it's nice to know that the router does that itself without you having to go and manually check. So this is the Netgear XR500 gaming router, as you guys know, but it's running what's called Duma OS. Now Duma OS is made by a company called NetDuma, who do a really old school gaming router and they've teamed up with Netgear which is absolutely awesome here and they've created this custom firmware. Now all the other NetDuma routers will eventually get this Duma OS firmware but it's really nice to see the first iteration of the Duma OS going on the Netgear XR500 here. So this is the interface. So right here we have our internet status, next we have our guest Wi-Fi status, then we have our wireless status, then we have things like the overall network usage, the CPU usage, and then our apps. Now this is all very new, this Duma OS stuff, and they currently don't have support for any new R apps as of yet, but it's nice to see that they're actually going to have an app store for this router so you can put like custom things on it to monitor your network. 
really, really cool. As you can see down the side here, we have certain things like the Geofilter, QoS, the Device Manager, the Network Monitor, and then we can also go into the settings here, which takes us into like an old school type of Netgear interface where we can go and set up things like router modes, WPS wizards, we can monitor the network, we can do the administration, we could uh, even do some ready share, which we will demonstrate at the end of this. But let's go over the gaming features. What makes this a gaming router? Now, stop. Go get a coffee or some caffeine or something, come back, click play, because I'm about to throw a little bit of terminology at you right now so this all makes sense and I need you guys to pay attention. So, one thing that causes massive problems, massive problems when gaming is ping spikes. And you would think that getting a gaming router would solve these issues with, well, certain things that it can do, like advanced QoS, quality of service, which it has right here. But why do we need QoS? And what is the actual cause of these ping spikes? Well, let me explain to you. So for this, I'm gonna click on the QoS tab. And as you can see earlier, the router did a speed test to determine our maximum download speed, the upload and download. And as you can see, we're currently using 100% and it's turned off. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put this website link in the description. You guys are gonna to go to it and with the QoS turned off, we're going to run this test right here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna test our router for buffer bloat. Now whilst this is doing this, I'm gonna to explain to you guys what buffer bloat is. So imagine you're there, playing your game, everything's fine. And then somebody comes back and their, and their phone connects to the Wi-Fi and it has some photos to upload to Google Drive or it has some Dropbox files to upload or it wants to download an update. Well, your router is not going to prioritise any traffic. So what it's going to do is this wants to download something. This is going to get the utmost bandwidth of your upload or download, which is going to cause you massive ping spikes. So as you can see there guys, we're getting buffer bloat of almost 130 milliseconds, which isn't 196, which isn't what we want at all. And what buffer bloat is going to do is uh, give you these massive ping spikes. So as you can see by here on this test, we have a buffer bloat score of B. So now we need that to be an A or A star. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go back into our Doom OS and we're going to turn on our anti buffer bloat. And what we're going to do is click always. I like this on all the time, right? And then what we're going to go ahead and do is limit our download bandwidth. Now I've figured on this router about 85% on the upload and download is, uh, is really good. Now you have to understand that this is going to it's going to impact your total upload and download performance, your download speed, but you'll now notice that if we go ahead and do the buffer bloat test again, as you guys can see, that graph is staying a lot lower. 11 milliseconds here, one millisecond, five milliseconds, 22 milliseconds, we're seeing nothing in the upwards of the 200 mark. Now that, that is really, really good. And there we go guys, now our buffer bloat score is an a, just by turning on one feature in our gaming router. So you're probably thinking, Alex, that's pretty cool. What's next? Well, this next feature is, is going to actually blow your mind. This is fairly mental. What I'm going to need is a console. I've got two of them right here, an Xbox and a PlayStation 4. It's going to work on either. And I've got a, a copy of uh, Advanced Warfare here. I'm going to put this in the Xbox. And what I'm now also going to do is I'm going to connect the Xbox to the router's Wi-Fi. Now, I 100% recommend for you to use an Ethernet cable, an Ethernet cable to connect your devices together. But I'm wanting to run this scenario as a worst case, as if you don't have Ethernet available and you need to use Wi-Fi, just to show you how actually capable and surprisingly capable this router is. I've loaded up Advanced Warfare here. Now, this pretty much works for any multiplayer game, whether you're on PC, uh, PlayStation 4, Xbox. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to click this little thing here and we're going to go ahead and set our home location. So for me, that's the United Kingdom. And as you can see, we've got this small little globe. Now usually, when you search for an online game, when you're playing an, an online game, it's going to connect you to anybody it can, really, in the entire world, right? And as you can see, this is what a normal router would do. It would use the entire world and connect you to whoever it could do. But what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to bring this radius down, and I'm going to say, look, to the router, I don't want you to be connecting to people, hosts, outside of this defined area. So I'm going to set this to 2,000 kilometers, right? 
And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is add the devices to this. So I'm going to click Add Device and I'm going to choose the Xbox One right here and then click Done. So as you guys can see here, we've got the Xbox One, we've set up our geo filter. there's a picture of a person there which is our Xbox which we've set up. So what I'm going to do is on the Xbox go to Multiplayer and I'm just going to try and get ourselves into a public match right here. So guys, as you can see here, it's found a host over here and found a host over here. But you see these have triangles next to them, what the router's going to do is reject me connecting to this guy and connect me only to somebody inside the circle. There you go, you can see it's found somebody there, we're connected to this guy and I'm in the game. Game, right? So it refused, the router refused me to connect to the person over here in America, which would give me a massive, massive ping spikes all the time connecting, I'm in the UK connecting to an American server, and it's connected to me somebody inside my user-defined radius. Now it's, it's midday right now, so there's obviously not many people playing uh, online games. But as you can see, if I click on here, everybody in this game has a full signal. And having a lower ping drastically, drastically improves your gameplay experience because you'll get a better hit register if you're playing, uh, you know, a, a shooter, an FPS shooter. So guys, those are the two main features of this gaming router, which gives it that title of gaming. Now there's one more that I'd like to show you, which is just a kind of cool little feature. So you can see here we're back on the QoS page where we uh, we defined our megabits per second and set it to around 85 to stop our buffer bloat. Just below that there's actually a bandwidth allocation. So if you really were having, still having problems, what you could go ahead and do is move up the bandwidth to the Xbox One. So as you can see now, the Xbox One is gonna get 75% of the total internet bandwidth, and the other two devices connected, my MacBook and my phone will get 13. You can update the distribution or reset it right here back to normal. And there's a few other different bits here. You can go in and look at unprioritized packets and the prioritized packets. This, this is a gaming router. Because of these features, especially the geo filter and the buffer bloat QOS. I'm actually, and I never thought I'd say this because this is a consumer networking product, I'm actually very impressed with this device. If you're looking for a gaming router, I genuinely can't believe I'm saying this because this is on the shelves in shops, and I would never recommend networking gear that's on the shelf in a shop. So we're doing this video a little bit backwards. I've just uh, sat at my kitchen table and recommended this XR500 gaming router to you. At the end of this video, I just want to show you what you actually get in the box. So you get uh, the quick start CD. I don't, you don't need any of this, really. I haven't even touched it. Uh, you get the router here, which is uh, obviously in a nice little, um, nice little sealed package. Now, this is why... Um, this is why I complain about these like styles of, of routers. Like, just look at the design of this thing. Is it necessary? Like, surely Netgear could have saved some some profit or time. Like, it doesn't need all. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Tell me, tell me in the comment section if I'm wrong. But Netgear, why don't you make something like really pretty and that people could like actually put somewhere? There's no way. I would put this on my desk. And that's my main gripe with it. It's actually a gaming router, right? It works really well, and I'm happy to recommend this to people. But it looks mental. And the fact that, like, it's got, like, antenna 2 and antenna 3, and you have to, like, antenna 1, and then you have to... Where's antenna 1? And you have to sort of screw them in. Like, it's easy to do. But if the antennas were built into the system, and then they put some little screw holes in the back so you could mount it somewhere. But the features in this thing, the stuff inside, it's what's inside that counts. Really, really good. Guys, we'll drop the link in the description. This video wasn't sponsored by Netgear whatsoever, but it was sponsored by Squarespace. So if you want to check out Squarespace, the one main thing I love about Squarespace is the beautiful designer templates that they offer. And these make making a website super, super simple depending on what product you want to sell or show on your site. The other thing is, it's it's just super simple. It's an all-in-one solution and Squarespace handles everything from actually creating your awesome design with these templates that I've just talked about, all the way to the actual domain, which in some cases can be very, very tricky to set up. So you can actually have your custom domain, i.e. www.techflow.co.uk, and Squarespace will handle all of that in one unique package. 
If you also have a domain already set up, it's super easy to transfer that over to Squarespace. And they also provide award-winning 24-7 support if you're having any problems in creating your website or doing your domain or anything to do with websites. My name's been Alex, this has been TechPlayer, and we will see you, you know what, in the next one. Adios. Thank you.